Hi, I'm Lisa from Australian Travel and Migration Blog, dreamingofdownunder.com. Today, I'm gonna to go through everything that you need to do to prepare for your house sitter. I run a pet care business in Sydney and I've done over 150 house sits over the last few years. And there are lots and lots of things you can do to help a house sit go smoothly for both the house sitter and for your pets. I'll leave a link below to my blog post on this if you want to go through it again. And there are lots of other resources on my website too for both house sitters and house owners. Okay, let's go. Number one is to go through your pet's routines with the house sitter during the meet and greet. If you're using a local sitter, it's standard to invite them over to your home for a meet and greet before the house sit starts. And during this, you'll go through all the pet's routines and anything else that's important. So show them where the pet food is, where the medication is, what the pets eat, where you keep your dog leads and poo bags, any other jobs that need doing to do with the pets. If there are any electrical items in your home that aren't simple to use, then go through that with them. So any TV remotes or maybe coffee machines, where the washing machine is, that kind of thing. If anything's hidden away and not in an obvious place, so maybe kettles or toasters are inside kitchen cupboards or light switches are in a strange place, just show them things like that as well. If you'll be letting them use a driveway or garage to park their car, show them that. Or if it's difficult to park outside your house, make sure you tell them where the best spot is to park. Also show them where your outdoor bins are and if they'll need to let themselves into the house on arrival, if you're leaving early, show them where you're going to leave a key for them. Number two is to write out clear instructions for your house sitter. This is really, really important. Even if you've shown them everything on the meet and greet, it's very difficult to memorize somebody talking for half an hour and opening random cupboard doors and going through routines, particularly if you're doing lots of meet and greets and lots of house sits, and there could be a big gap between when the meet and greet is and when the house sit starts. So anything that you showed them on the meet and greet, you also need to write down on the instruction sheet. If you haven't written these out before, I've got a free template that I've put together. I'll leave the link below. You can download it and print it out for your house sitter and fill it in. Make sure you fill these in well in advance so you can put some thought into it. I have arrived at house sits before and the owner hasn't even started doing this and I've had to stand around waiting while they're rushing around the house, scribbling things down that don't really make sense. So it's really annoying when that happens. It's also just a bit of a waste of the house sitter's time if they're waiting around for you and then they can't really follow your instructions because it's all rushed. Some of the items that you need to include on the instructions are the best contacts for you, any emergency contacts or local relatives or friends that could step in if the sitter needed help in any way, how much the pets eat, what kind of food and where that's kept, also where the litter trays are for any cats and how you clean them, do you scoop them, do you do a full clean, that kind of thing. Remind them where the dog leads are kept and where you take them for a walk and how long you normally walk them for. If the pets have medication, make sure you write down what they have and make sure it's somewhere that's easy for them to find. If you've got harnesses that are a little bit complicated, maybe send a video or a photo to the sitter as well. That's really helpful because I still come across harnesses that I haven't used before and I've used hundreds and I have to Google it sometimes and try and find a video. Remind the sitter if there are any places that your pets aren't allowed, so whether they're allowed up on the sofa, whether they're allowed to go in the bedrooms, also when you go out where do you leave the dogs, are they in the garden, are they shut inside, do you need to go through a procedure when you go out and leave them, like giving them treats or putting them in a specific room or something. Tell them what days to put the bins out and which ones need to go out, whether it's you know the paper bin or the plastic bin. If any cleaners will be visiting, make sure you write down when they're going to arrive, particularly if they've got a key, because it's quite unnerving when people suddenly let themselves into the house and you're in there on your own. Or if any gardeners or pool maintenance people will be around, just let them know so that they're prepared for random men outside the window in the back garden. <laughs> Make sure you leave them the Wi-Fi password as well as the network name because quite often people just put the password and then I have to search through about six different networks because they're all coming up at the top. Any electrical items that are a bit complicated to use, just write down some instructions. So maybe if you use a particular dishwasher setting or how to use the aircon or whether you want them to limit their aircon use, things like that. If you're happy for them to eat your food, make sure you write that down or if you just want them to use up any vegetables that might go off, tell them that that's fine. Generally, house sitters bring their own food, but most house owners say help yourself to anything that's kind of standard. So it's totally up to you. If there are any items that can't go into the dishwasher because they'll get damaged, make sure you tell them that and don't assume they'll know. I'd never even lived in a house with a dishwasher until I came to Australia. It's not as common in the UK, so I'm pretty sure I've wrecked some stuff. If the house sitter will be leaving before you get back, and they need to lock up from outside and hide the keys somewhere, make sure you tell them where to leave it. And also remind them of the date and time that you'll be back so they're prepared. Number three is vet and pet preparation. 
So make sure your pets are up to date on any vaccines or tick prevention medication that they need. Stock up on pet food and poo bags and anything else that the pets need. Make sure they've got enough medication. I did arrive at a house at once and they'd forgotten to buy the food and just casually told me to go out and buy it and then they'd pay me back. Remember that it's possible your pets will get ill and need to go to the vet when you're away. I know it might seem unlikely, but I've had seven trips to the vet since I've been a house sitter. So you must tell your vet that you're away and make sure that you can pay over the phone by card or that they'll put it on account for you and you can pay when you get back. Remember, it's never the house sitter's responsibility to pay your vet bills for you because they don't really know you. You wouldn't go into a shop and tell the assistant to buy you something for about $200 and then you'll pay them back. So make sure you sort that in advance. If you've got a local friend or family member, ask them if they could step in if the pets get ill and need to go to the vet. Most house sitters will be happy to take the pet to the vet if they need to, but remember they're not paid to cover that time or petrol. Three of the visits I did were two hour round trips because I had to drive to an out of hours vet. Only one person out of all of those people ever offered petrol money back. Also, if it's a local sitter, they might need to go out to work and they might not be able to get time off to go to the vet. Number four is to prepare your home for your house sitter. It's really important that you leave your home in a clean and tidy state for the house sitter. Most of the things that I'm gonna list are just about respecting the house sitter's time and not making work for them on arrival. Because remember their, their pay covers, moving house, looking after your pets and staying overnight. But if they have to clean up after you when they arrive, that's unpaid labor. So try not to put that onto them if you can. The most important thing, I think, is to put clean sheets on the bed for the house sitter. Imagine if you turned up to some accommodation that you were renting and the sheets were covered in makeup and dirt and hair and all sorts of other stains. So just always, always put clean sheets on for the house sitter. Also, I would give them some clean towels and I would leave those on the bed folded up just so that they know they're clean. It's never, it's never obvious whether they're clean or not if people just put a set in the bathroom for you. If you can spare just a small amount of hanging space or a few hangers and maybe a shelf, that is amazing. Nobody really expects that on a house sit, but when people do it, it's so, so helpful because it really is horrible just living out of a case and having all your things on the floor, particularly when there's animals walking around on the floor. So I normally bring a few hangers and just squeeze something into the wardrobe if I can. And just make sure the bedroom's vacuumed and dusted and isn't dirty. I stayed in a spare room once where I don't think they dusted it for years and it was so dusty that I couldn't actually breathe through my nose because I'm allergic to dust. So it, yeah, it was really horrible. So all the living areas, just make sure they're clean and tidy and there's not clutter or rubbish everywhere. Try and leave the remote controls for the TV in an obvious place. Sometimes people put them away in a drawer and I have to go through loads of drawers trying to hunt for them. In the kitchen, it's completely essential that you make room in the fridge for their food. Remember, they're not gonna be living off takeaways. So if you can clear a shelf or even just half a shelf in the fridge, that's really, really helpful. I've come to houses where there's literally not room for even one thing and I've had to take out loads and loads of drinks bottles just to be able to fit a few things in the fridge. I would much rather somebody cleared a shelf in the fridge than left me presents or chocolates or anything like that. Like it just, it's wonderful when you open a fridge and there's a whole shelf for you. Also leave just a small amount of food in the freezer. I think most people probably don't freeze a lot of things, but just a small amount is good. I use freezer blocks for when I move between house sits to keep my food cold. So they'll probably have something to put in the freezer. If you've got lots and lots of vegetables that are going moldy or they're really beyond the date that you would eat them, don't leave them for your house sitter and say, eat what you want and then give them a job of cleaning your fridge out for you. Just throw it away if it's going a bit gross. I've had fridges where there's literally liquid and mold and I've had to empty the whole thing out, fill a sack full of moldy veg and disinfect the fridge before I could even put anything in it. So just make sure it's clean. With the dishwasher, make sure that you empty the dishwasher before you go or at least leave it you know, mostly empty. Don't cram it full of stuff and then go. The house sitter doesn't know where all your things go and a lot of things don't dry in the dishwasher so they've got the job of emptying everything out, drying everything, hunting through every single drawer and cupboard and their pay just doesn't cover that so make sure everything is just ready to use. Obviously don't leave dirty dishes for them to do or leave pans with food in. I've had people do that for me before, it's really annoying. Remember the house sitter will be bringing a whole pantry with them basically and they're gonna have to empty that out all over your worktops. So make sure 
sure that there's space on the kitchen worktops for their food. They've also got to have space to prepare food as well. So if you've got a small kitchen and maybe there's lots of appliances they're probably not going to use or a lot of things just cluttering the surfaces, maybe just clear some of them away so there's a little bit of space for them. If you've got big dogs that steal food from the worktop, you need to tell the house sitter, otherwise they're going to lose all their food. And you also need to clear some space in the pantry for them to put their food because they're going to need to store it somewhere. And it's not great having to store your food in the bedroom or somewhere like that. Make sure you've got plenty of washing up liquid or dishwasher tablets and that your cloths are clean. Don't leave really, really old grotty black cloths. Also some nice clean tea towels. Make sure your kitchen bins are empty or near empty. If they're completely full and overflowing, make sure you empty them. Don't leave that job for your house to do when they arrive. Also make sure you've got enough spare bin liners for them and that they're in an obvious place. The bathroom, just make sure it's clean and remember they've got to unpack all their toiletries as well. So maybe give them just a little bit of space on the sink for that. Obviously make sure there's plenty of toilet paper as well. With the laundry, make sure your washing machine is empty. Don't leave dirty clothes in there if that's where you store your dirty clothes. Don't put a wash on and then go and just assume they're gonna do all your family's laundry for you and dry it and fold it. I've had people leave the washing machine on and the dryer on and the line full of clothes and I've had to do a whole family of fives washing for them before I could even use the machine. Imagine if the house had left their dirty laundry there for you to do and said, you deal with that and I'll come and pick it up later. <laughs> you wouldn't be very impressed. So washing machine empty, dryer empty. If you've got a clothes rack, put that in an obvious place. Don't lock it away in a balcony or something that's full of your clothes on it, just leave it empty and somewhere obvious. And definitely don't leave dirty clothes on the floor. I've had people leaving their dirty underwear on the bathroom floor and I've had to pick it up and move it. It's really, really gross. <laughs> just remember for the house sitter that it's not a one-off for them. They're doing this probably every week for years and years. So what might seem like just a little job to leave them or a little favor to ask of them. If every owner did that throughout a year, it's, it's hours and hours and hours of unpaid work. So please just make it easy for them. Number five is to make sure the house sitter knows what time you're coming back and what date. I've had quite a lot of people get the end date wrong or change the end date of their holiday and forget to tell me. Um, or people just deciding to come back early and giving me a few hours of notice. So it takes hours and hours and hours to pack and load the car and clean after a house sit. So give them plenty of notice and never just burst in when you do arrive and make sure you ring the bell. <laughs> Even though it's your house, they are living there. So just give them a little bit of privacy. Most house sitters will check out in the morning so they can go straight to their next house sit. So if you're not back till the evening and you want them to stay later, make sure that you tell them and ask them because they might, if they're a traveler, they might need to stay another night. That would help them out. Or if it's a local person, they might need to charge you for another night because that would stop them taking a house sit for that night. So the same way that you would check out of a hotel in the morning so that they can use the room for the next person, a house sitter will usually check out in the morning so that they can get to their next house sit for that night. Okay, that's it for my tips on how to prepare for your house sitter. I hope that was useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any other tips or if you've got any other questions, if you're new to this. Make sure you check out my blog for lots more house sitting resources and please like and subscribe for more videos on house sitting and life travel in Australia. Thanks for watching. Usually before you agree to give them the house sit, I'll leave a link below. I'll leave a link. I'll leave a link below.